So uh, here's a video just to go over some of the topics that have been typically asked on the regents in the most recent recent regents. So I just wanted to go over some of these concepts and topics very briefly, or as briefly as I can. Uh, one of the things that you should look out for is the whole idea of focal pendulum, which is basically proof that the Earth rotates on its axis. Okay, uh, so essentially, you might either get a diagram that you see here, which is basically your focal pendulum, and it swings back and forth, and it changes directions uh, throughout uh, a period of time. But the thing is, nothing is touching it. So it's the, the rotational force of the Earth is causing this pendulum to swing back and forth and, and also allowing it to change directions as it's swinging back and forth. So focal pendulum is essentially just to prove or proves that the Earth rotates on its axis. Now, the Earth actually rotates 15 degrees per hour. Okay, so remember, the Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour. So that's something that you should look out for. Now, in terms of astronomy, just very quickly, a light year is the time it takes light to travel in a year. One light year is equal to 6 trillion miles. Right? So in reality, stars out in space, stars are actually trillions of miles apart. Now, light, when we talk about the speed of light, light travels at a, at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles per second. So that's just something that you should be mindful of. Now, in terms of the Big Bang Theory, essentially it's, it's the theory that states that all of time and space was created at this point, a single point in time, or quote-unquote explosion. So the Big Bang Theory is a theory that states that the universe started at a singular point called the singularity. We know, we know for sure that the universe is expanding. Okay, so the universe is expanding and expanding only. Now the proof of that is what we call the red shift. So when you look at stars from a distance, the light coming from that star appears to turn towards the red. The red end of the spectrum, the visible spectrum. So what it's telling you, red has the longest wavelength in terms of the visible light spectrum. When you get into the ultraviolets or the blues, the wavelength are shorter. So if it's being stretched out, then that means that object is moving away from you. Right, so again, so that's proof the light from distant da galaxies is being stretched out towards the red end of the spectrum. Right, so it's moving away from you, it's called the red shift. Also, another type of proof that they tend to ask sometime is what we call the cosmic background radiation. So remember, instead of the red shift, they may ask you, or they may ask you what type of proof that the universe is expanding or that a Big Bang had occurred is what we call the cosmic background radiation. Okay, now this whole idea here is also known as the Doppler effect. So the shift in wavelength of a spectrum from its normal position due to relative motion between the source and observer. So if you have the object where the sound, the light, coming towards you, the wavelengths are going to be shorter. In this case, it's called the blue shift. And again, if the wavelength or the object is moving away from you, the wavelength is being stretched out. This is what we call the red shift. All right. Now, in terms of the phases of the moon, okay, essentially what you need to look out for pay attention to is the location of the sun or the sun's rays. So in this case is in this position right here. So the new moon is always going to be on the same side as the sun or the sun rays. Then the whole phase of the moon goes counterclockwise. Okay? So the lit portion or the light portion is always going to start on the right side of the moon. 
and then the light portion of the moon is going to progress until you get into the full moon. Now the full moon, from the full moon, you're going back towards the new moon phase. So now is the dark that comes from the right side, which is chasing out the light until it becomes completely dark, and then you have your new moon phase. Okay, so the lit part of the moon will always come from the right. So remember, right is light, and the dark follows light. And it takes about 29 to 30 days to complete a full cycle of the moon. So they may ask you uh, how many days between the main four cycles, okay, or how many cycle, how many days are in between from one cycle, uh, one phase of the moon or the other. So it just requires just a little bit of math. Okay, so it's 29 to 30 days to complete one full cycle of the moon. Now, in terms of a lunar eclipse, so this is all about positioning. A lunar eclipse occur when the moon falls within the shadow of the umbra of the earth, which is caused by the sun. So the sun is shining onto the earth, and behind the earth has is its shadow, and the moon moves within that shadow, okay? So the lunar eclipse, the full moon moves into the earth's shadow, okay? So it's really all about positioning, where you have the earth doing the lunar eclipse. Now the solar eclipse is in the opposite side. So the solar eclipse, the new moon phase, in the new moon phase, uh, the moon moves in front of the sun and casts a shadow onto Earth. So the, if it's a solar eclipse, it's the moon that passes in between the sun and the Earth, thus blocking some of the sunlight coming from the sun. All right now, ocean currents, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, surface movements of the Earth's oceans are caused by winds and Earth's rotation. Planetary winds help move or push surface waters. The results are ocean currents. An ocean current is a stream of water that circulates through the ocean basin. So, a lot of this refers to the reference table, page 4 of the reference sur table, surface ocean currents. And again, the key thing here is to look at the key. So the dark arrow, the black arrow, represents the warm ocean current. The white arrow represents the cool ocean current. So the main thing here is to be able to find the main ocean currents and to tell whether it's a warm ocean current or a cool ocean current along which coast of the continent that, that is located and simply maybe just the direction that it's moving towards. For example, the Gulf Stream is along the east coast of North America, right, and is moving out towards the Atlantic Ocean towards Europe. Then you have the California current, which is a cold ocean current, and is moving south, okay, south towards the equator. Then you have the Peru Chile, uh, the Peru current, which is on the west coast of South America, and that's also moving towards the equator. And on the west side, um, pardon me, on the east coast of South America, you have the Brazil, the Brazil current, which is a warm ocean current. Planetary belts. The main thing that we need to know here is that at certain latitudes, you're either going to have wet climates or dry climates. So at 30 latitude north, and at 30 latitude south, you're going to have dry, ocean, uh, dry, dry climates. Because here the air is sinking. The air is sinking down to the surface. So you're going to have dry climates. Right? And also these are areas of high pressure. Any place where the air is rising, okay, so at latitude zero, or the air is converging and rising. Latitude zero, which is the equator, or latitude 60 north and 60 south, 
you're going to have a wet climate because the air is rising and anytime air rises air rises cools condense and forms clouds and if there's enough moisture you're going to have rain for the most part so thus at the equator around the equator you have a lot of rain